Be still and know that I am God. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Just be still and know that I'm God. Ah, be still. Ah, wait a minute. How do you be still? How do you be still and know that God is? Sort of the question of the century, isn't it? <laughs> but I have another question for you. Would it be all right with you if your life got easier? I'm going to ask it again. I want you to really feel what that question does to you. Would it be all right with you if your life got easier? <sighs> like maybe, like... <sighs> my shoulders can kind of relax, my chest can kind of open, I can kind of drop some control. That might be happening for you. You might be going, oh, I hope so, but I don't believe it. Or you might go like one of our music people when we were praying in this morning and said, well, what would we do then? What would we do if life were easier? Now, let me tell you, let me give you the caveat, the fine print. Just because you learn to have more ease in your life doesn't mean that the outer circumstances are always easy. Sorry, I wish it did. But it's not always true. But when we can find the place in us, and it is a state of consciousness, it is a vibrational alignment with that which we call ease, then we have more capacity to navigate through all that life gives us. Now, I think you would agree, I should ask you, instead of tell you, working on this engagement thing, especially because you're not here. <laughs> Life was a little interesting this past year, year and a half. Would you agree? Yeah. Is there a place in your life, a specific place in your life, where you would like a little more ease? Now, this is the engagement part. If you're willing, type it in the comments. Now, I didn't bring my phone, but I'll look at them later. But I'm going to pretend to know that you might say you could use a little more ease in your health a little more wholeness in your health. As I mentioned in our opening prayer, we have some people here in this room whose family members are facing health challenges, as many of your family members are, maybe you are yourself. So when you think about that challenge, or that person, or that experience, what happens to your body? Do you contract, or do you go, oh, like energetically, because I know a lot of us are unity trained, so we're really good at saying the words, oh, all is well, don't worry. But if we're not doing it, if we're not changing our vibration, then we're trying to do spiritual bypass, which is always kind of a, you know, a favorite path, but it's not the highest and best path. It's just the one we choose right? Because we don't want to look. We don't want to tell the truth. We don't want to experience that. Or maybe the place you need more ease is in relationships. Or maybe in your vocation or your job or your economics. Or maybe in your calendar. Or maybe in your bank account. Now, those of you who are already signed up for Prosperity Plus, you might notice that I hit on those four areas. If you're not already signed up for Prosperity Plus, shameless plug, and you need some ease in any of those areas, go look at the course. It will help. It'll create the shift, which will open the space for the transformation. Because the truth is, whatever it is we focus on is what we get more of. So when we're focused on, I don't want this dis-ease. I don't want this lack. I don't want this argument. What are we going to get more of? 
that very thing. But how do we fall into ease? How do we shift our vibration and our awareness and then our whole energetic being? How do we do it? That's the key. That's the key question. It's also the key answer, right? So I've had, uh, you know, years ago, my life, well, way, 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 way back when my kids were little, I was a single mom for most of their lives. And when they were little itty bitty and I was first single and we were having those typical early morning moments, maybe some of you can relate. Hurry up, wake up, get out of bed, brush your teeth, eat your breakfast, put your clothes on, tie your shoes, get your backpack, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. There was a little like stress in our days and I woke up one day and I said, wait a minute, is there, a, is there another way? And through the spiritual practices and through the principles and through probably some coaching I was getting or some awarenesses I was having, that stopped. And we were able to find this point of ease. We still had to do the same actions, still had to get the kids out of bed and get their teeth brushed and their clothes on and their breakfast done and their backpacks ready and into the car. But we were able to do it in the spaciousness of ease. So I share that story because it is a definite past that had a pivot moment to come into a present moment. The present moment is for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part, I live a life of great ease. Now, the question I asked you a moment ago, would it be all right with you if life got easier? I heard that when I was in seminary, 1998, or friend and colleague, and maybe you've heard of Maria Namath, was basing her work around that question. But that question land, it got me. You know, I'd already had the experience with the kids. I've already had some experiences of doing life less stressed, if we could say that. And it, it hit me, and it, and it hit me home in such a way that it's been with me ever since. And so a few years ago, when I was getting ready to uh, write my first book, which is really my second book, but we won't talk about the first one until another time. So the first real Amazon best-selling book, and that came, I feel like I'm spinning a little bit here, so let me see if I can catch myself. That came because I taught Mary Morrissey's Prosperity Plus the first time, and out of that came a reigniting of my desire to write a book. So that sort of immediately followed. See how these things are all woven together? It's true. But I thought, what am I going to write? What am I going to write? And then I found a process where, where the book was basically birthed through me. And I'm like, what am I going to call it? It's like, oh, falling into ease. Release your struggle and create a life you love. Falling into ease, falling into ease. Now, I will tell you that I promote in this book the idea of gently falling, of sinking, of landing, of opening into this place of ease. And I've also stumbled and fallen hard and found ease. But I don't recommend that method. If you can avoid it, just do, because it's just more painful that way. But when I first, maybe not the first time, but when I first had this stumble, this fall, this drop, it came out of a time in my life where it was really hard. And in that stumble, I, I hit my knees and I went, oh, I can't, I can't do my life. This was many years ago, early 90s. And sometimes share this story, but it, what came out of that was this covenant, really, with spirit that said, if, for spirit to me, if you follow, I will lead, and that has been a foundational piece, and then when I heard in the late 90s, this, would it be all right with you if life got easier, it's another foundational piece, and I had hoped that that meant my life actually got easier, that was not proven to be true, 
But the ease that I found in myself allows me to navigate my life. And so what is ease? Uh, what is the idea of ease? Ease, as I use it in the book, ease, as I use it a lot of time, is like landing into that point of oneness. Ease can be said to be the quantum field, or the quantum field can be said to be a point of ease. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, which is the experience of spirit, could be said to be ease. It's that point, it's that be still and know. It's that be still, it's accessing the point of that vibration, frequency, dimension, consciousness. Mark Nepo, who's a, a poet, he's written many books, describes that sweet spot of ease like this. Each person is born with an unencumbered spot, free of expectation and free of ambition and embarrassment, free of fear and worry, an umbilical spot of grace where we were first touched by God. It is this spot of grace that issues peace. Psychologists call this spot the psyche. Theologians call it the soul. Young calls it the seat of the unconscious. Hindu masters call it Atman. Buddhists call it Dharma. Rilke calls it inwardness. Sufis call it qual. Then Jesus calls it the center of our love. And it is that place where you touch it and you land in this spaciousness that is ease, no matter what's going on. So a story. A farmer lives in a very small house with his wife and his five children, and it's loud and it's noisy, and it's squishy, meaning there's not enough space. Then his in-laws come and move in with him, and it gets louder, and less space, and more messy, and more noisy. So he goes to a wise man, and he says, it's making me crazy. This noise is making me crazy. And the wise man says, well, you're a farmer, right? He says, yeah. He goes, well, you have chickens, right? He goes, yeah. He says, bring the chickens into the house. He goes, what? But he does what the wise man says. And the chickens, of course, are louder and squawking and stinky. He goes back to the wise man the next week. He goes, oh, my gosh, it's gotten worse. I can't believe you told me to do that. He says, he goes, now what do I do? He says, well, you have goats, right? Yeah, I have goats. He goes, bring the goats in the house. What? He goes, just do it. So he did it because he's investing in somebody who knows more than him, M maybe, perhaps, right? He's willing to do something different. So he brings the goats in. There's three of them. Amidst all those kids and, and those adults and the grandparents and the chickens, it's a nightmare. And he goes back to the wise man the next week and he says, did you bring the goats in? He goes, yeah, how was it? He goes, horrible, horrible. He goes, now what do I do? He goes, I'm just like absolutely at my wit's end. I can't even hardly go into the house. He goes, well, the wise man, well, do you have sheep? He goes, are you kidding me? Of course I have sheep. Just bring them in. What? You've got to be crazy. He says, just do it. So he goes home, he brings the sheep in. And now the house, can you only imagine? Oh, crazed house. And the next week, the man, the farmer goes to the wise man. He goes, okay. I, I don't know, I don't know what you got me into because it is not working for me. What do I do now? And the wise man says, well, go home and take the sheep back out and let the goats go and put the chickens back in the yard and notice what you notice. 
And so the farmer went home and he took the sheep and the goats and the chickens, he cleared the space out. And all of a sudden, those five kids and the farmer's wife and the in-laws found their house to be spacious and quiet and clean. Sometimes it's got to be a little worse before it gets better. Sometimes you don't realize how good your life is until you bring the chickens in and the goats and the sheep. But if you've got chickens and goats and sheep in your consciousness around how bad it is and how awful it is in your head, in your world, in your life, in the world, then feel what that feels like and then let them back out. Let them back out. And what you will find is a spaciousness of consciousness. And in that spaciousness of consciousness, you find yourself. And when you find yourself, then you can navigate through whatever life gives you. Jesus says to us from Matthew 6. This is a big one for people. So, you know, fasten your seatbelts, like get ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear from the master? Okay, do not worry. Yeah, but wait, but you don't know how bad it is and you don't know about my brother and my sister and my mother and my uncle and my cousin. You don't know about my bank account and you don't know, you don't know what the things I have to worry about. You have no idea. Jesus says, do not worry, do not worry about your life, about what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stir away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clo clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not, not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not worry, but instead seek first the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the experience of oneness. It is the experience of that presence, that one presence and one power. We call it God. More often I use the word source or creation or universe or intelligence or infinite. It's the experience of that presence that is both within us and so much greater than us. And when we have that experience, and we allow it to fill our awareness fully, there becomes nothing to worry about. There becomes an overwashing, overriding, enveloping sense of peace and love and joy and compassion. Here's what happens biologically, physiologically, psychologically, vibrationally, here's what happens. Here's why this matters. We go through our lives tied up in knots with stress 
and concern, and what would we think about if we had ease? What would we do if we had grace? We actually had the experience, or I did this morning in the sanctuary earlier, because sometimes we're kind of running around and we're busy and we're, you know, there's lots to do and lots of th pieces and moving parts and all of that. But there was a couple of us in here, it's like, wow, it feels like really spacious this morning. And there's this sense of, of oh, all is well, and it is done. Now, telling on myself a little bit, I, I, I usually am spacious and quiet and landed and all of this stuff, and I am a little bit internally prickly today. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, what's going on? I'm talking about ease. I don't want to be prickly. Well, you can't wish it away, right? That's why I share this. You can't just wish it away, but you can transcend it. How do you do it? Notice what you notice. Like, I notice, ah, I got a little thing in my back. It's like, you know, kind of like prickly thing. I got a little thing in my, I'm just like not like fully presently grounded. So the first thing I do is notice what I notice. The second thing I do is not judge it, right? Do not judge. Do not shame yourself or guilt yourself or blame yourself, much less anyone else. Take a breath. Feel your feet. Choose again, but you cannot choose again until you notice it. So back to biologically, physiologically, hormonally, all of, the, all of that thing. When we walk around prickly or tense or stressed or tired or sick, no judgment on any of those, but our system, body, mind, heart, soul, spirit system, contracts. It's, we tap into the reptilian brain and we go into survival. It's nothing wrong with that. It's just survival. It's just how we seem to live on the planet, but we don't have to live there because there's higher levels of consciousness. And so when we are contracted, like go ahead and contract now just for fun because this is, you know, working on engagement here. So wherever you're sitting in your house, contract. You can even contort like, right? Contract and contort. Notice how nothing flows. Like, what do you notice in your body when you're contracted? <sighs> so, okay. Biologically, every time you release that, you open, you fall into ease, you drop that, you do your heart math practices, you land in your heart, you feel your feet, you look at the sky, you distract your reptilian brain, which is like a two-year-old. If your two-year-old is busy doing something you don't want that two-year-old to do, you don't say, don't, 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 don't. Well, maybe you do, but what works, works better is distraction. Come play over here. Come play over here. Let's go play over here. We do that with our reptilian brain. And when we do that, HeartMath, which is the secular scientific organization that's proving spirituality works, and you spend a few moments in your heart, out of your brain into your heart, you spend a few moments activating appreciation or gratitude, your physiological body begins to change. The stress hormones begin to decrease. The feel-good hormones begin to increase. The, the chemical cocktails that flood your system change. And you actually come into coherence, which is another word for ease. So when you take the time, and you can do it over time in minutes or moments or seconds, you do it with awareness. And you do it for long enough that your body shifts. Like, <sighs> often it's an exhale. <sighs> for me, my shoulders drop to where they belong instead of, you know, up as earrings. My chest opens. I can feel my feet again. I bring my awareness to my belly. It's like, oh, there I am. And what's happening is we're disengaging from the monkey mind. And when you disengage from the mind, you can access your being. 
And when you access your being, your heart and mind come into coherence and your biochemical system comes into coherence and healing begins. And abundance begins and wholeness shows up and all of those things that we actually desire because we enter into that point of beingness where Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. And greater things than these shall you do. We access the divine mind, not through our mind, but through our be still and know, through that point of ease, through that practice of landing in a different place. And so if you're a part of the spirit groups or you want to be part of the spirit groups, this is a great book, shamelessly promoted, <laughs> for that. We've got a study guides and there's exercises and journaling prompts and uh, meditations each and every time that you come together. And it's a super easy to read book. And it's a super um, easy to practice book. And in that, it becomes transformational. Chris Chenoweth, who is a Unity minister in Texas, uh, for many years, he's been around for a long time. Um, a friend of ours, he, he, he has this little thing on the back. He says, um, <clears throat> I recommend, uh, oh, I'll read the whole thing. Falling into Ease by Eliza Bloom Robinson is a well-written book that I recommend for this transition into your higher living. Easy to read, easy to relate to, easy to implement. Don't put off what can begin right now, your life. I recommend you reading Falling into Ease. I recommend considering getting into a spirit group. They're all gonna be by Zoom. So a spirit group is a small group that comes together to study, a small group that comes together for fellowship, for community, for connection, and for learning and growing. So Jesus knew the power of falling into ease. Charles Fillmore knew it too. That power, he called it going to headquarters when everything began to change. Three ways, I was gonna give you three ways to do it, and I know I'm kind of coming to my time here, but three ways to do it. So the first is notice what you notice, and if you're contracted, drop it. Okay, so do this. So we already contracted, I don't wanna leave you there. Contract it, right? Contract it. <clears throat> notice it, drop it. Okay, so stop, drop, and pivot. Like stop, drop, and roll. You know, you're the fireman, right? So, oh, my stomach's cramping up. Oh, my shoulder hurts. Oh, my jaw's tight. Oh, I don't feel very good. I feel prickly. Notice it, stop it, drop it. Like physically drop it. Just drop it. Change your vibration. Change your consciousness. That simply. And then pivot. What would you love instead? This is where the power of distraction comes in. Look at a flower, look at a child, come to a memory. Raise your vibration any way possible and there's a million ways possible. Do it. Do it again and again and again and your life will begin to change. You will begin to release your struggle and create a life you love. Release your struggle and create a life you love. Love. We are here to make manifest the glory of God. We are here to awaken to the truth of who we are. We are spiritual beings in an awakening process here to fall into ease so that then we can birth into the new humanity, one of love, kindness, compassion, one of beauty and creativity and innovation, one of fulfillment. One that is about accessing the truth of who you are and bringing it forth as a gift onto the planet. Stop, drop, pivot. Practice that again and again and again. Jump into a spirit group. Sign up for Prosperity Plus and begin to become the person you are here to be with ease. God bless you.